Hi Rod. Hey Glenn, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you mate. Yeah. So this is Rod Dewar from Fronius and uh, I've known Rod for, I don't know, 10 years or more. We sort of yeah, shuffle around nice. standards committees and, and stuff and I'm always excited when I come and see what Fronius are up to. And this appears. What's this all about? Uh, well I guess this is the uh, single phase hybrid that everyone's been uh, waiting for for quite a long time. So finally, finally getting there, but um, yeah, so just to complete the range, so we've obviously got the three-phase hybrid with the SIMO. Um, this will be the single phase, uh, which will be addressed a lot more of the market here. Um, as you see, it's a different format. Uh, so I guess between the format, we've, we've changed a lot of the service concept with it as well. Um, different electronic technology, uh, and then also more future-proofing for um, the likes of VPP stuff, uh, and you know, it's all kind of things going on there. So a lot more advanced communication remotely with it, etc. Um, this one here is going to be from three to six, uh, so three, four, five, and six uh, in this format, and we're also looking at bringing out a larger one uh, possibly uh, next year, so like an eight and ten as well. So, yeah. So, has it got the features we know and love about uh, the existing range, uh, integrated DC isolator? Yep, so it's got that, so I mean you're probably aware that some of the regs have changed around that, So, but um, this isolator will be compliant as well, uh, so we use a Benedict isolator uh, with this. The, the actual snap technique is changed, um, so we have gone away um, from that purely because the way we did the service concept is that um, you won't be changing the whole inverter, um, you'll just be changing like a power module, and that's one piece. Uh, so you may be able to keep one of those in stock, um, so do like a one-site service visit if you, if you need to. Uh, so be able to do that and the connection area as well. So some of the different things we've got on here is um, your half-turn screws. Uh, also with the connections, we used um, like spring terminals for it, so rather than screws. So every now and then we've had that where someone hasn't tightened it up enough, etc. Um, so with that one at least you can, it's always got a guaranteed uh, uniform um, like Know, connection on there for multi-stranded so. cable. Yep. yep. Um, what sizes will it take? Cool. Uh, ask me questions. Just the standard, um, you know, four and six mil, or yeah, up to six at least. Yeah. At least okay. Six, cool. Yeah. 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 On yeah. the AC side, you know, four. Yes, on the six. AC side as well. Yep. So, um, and I guess the other things with this one too is um, to do backup, uh, of course. So uh, with or without a battery. So you don't even need a battery. If you backup, backup without a battery. How's yeah. that work? Uh, so, well, the, the inverter's got a DC bus inside, so whether that's um, supplied via um, solar or via battery, doesn't matter. So long as that DC bus has got the energy, um, then yeah, it can, can do backup. Cool. So, I mean, obviously you need to have the uh, enough energy, so if you've got a two kilowatt load on, there's only one kilowatts of sun, then obviously that's not going to work. Um, but so long as uh, the energy's there, then yeah, you can do that. You can do that with the Simon hybrid as well. So it's solar ride through interruptions when the sun's shining, small loads that keep running. Yeah, yeah. Without battery. Yeah. So battery Battery ready with some of the benefits of a battery in terms of uh, ride through of uh, interruption. Yeah. Speaking of batteries, what batteries do you see it being uh, compatible with? Uh, so we're starting off with the BYD, yep. uh, so the HV version, so not the LV, HV. Um, that comes in the 6.4 up to 10.2 on this inverter, on the other inverter you can do up to the 11.5. Uh, so we're starting off with that, um, only because uh, we're also doing LG as well, but LG are bringing out a new series uh, towards the end of the year, so we're kind of waiting to see how that's going to look. and in terms of the protocols and what we need to do. So, uh, but they're the two on the plan at the moment. We have um, a couple of others we're looking into uh, at the moment, kind of secret, um, don't really know. I don't even know them myself. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of other ones we're looking into, but it'll always be high, high voltage. I'm noticing a trend towards high voltage batteries or so-called high voltage, something around the sort of three, 400 volt mark. Um, what's the, why is that trend happening? Um, well, there's a few things behind it, I guess. Uh, one of the things is you uh, don't need as high a current. It makes, it makes sense. So you don't have to have the battery right with the inverter. You've got more flexibility, like you have like 20 metres away uh, somewhere and then have the, the cables running to it. So you do four or six mil, whatever you need for that. The other thing, I guess, we started out with a higher voltage uh, one for the Simon Hybrid just purely because of efficiency. Because your internal bus uh, for a single phase inverter is around 380 volts for a three phase are at about 6650. So because the voltage is, is closer to that internal bus, then the inverter doesn't have to work as hard, so you don't get as, uh, as many losses. So, um, so the efficiency round trip, whole efficiency is, is higher. With that. So I think they're probably some of the two key things. There may be some others, um, but they're the two to the keys being yeah. And are these connected via plain screw adapters or plugs and sockets? Uh, so, so it's actually interesting. I've uh, been asking a few people because we're looking at this. This one's what we call the rest of world. Yep. Better, so um, gets used in Europe and um, everywhere except everywhere except uh, the US. Um, so we've got certain types of adapters on there, but we are looking at um, 
having uh, you know, more um, knockouts where you can come in from the side and also from the back on this Rear one. entry. Uh, so wow. you had to come in there nice. uh, and um, and more from the bottom here. So yep. But uh, this one's yeah usually for the for the rest of the world as well. One of the most noticeable features is this. What's mm -hmm. this? It's a fan. Uh, so um, we're a big believer in active cooling. So. Um, just to keep the electronics uh, a lot cooler than you would in a, in a static type cooling environment. So having the fan on the front, um, not quite sure where we choose to do it on the front uh, instead of the side. Um, one of the things may be that you can, because you can parallel these up, you can get them closer together. Ah, clearances um, are less. So the clearances uh, probably be a bit less. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm not quite sure apart from that. <laughs> it's a bigger fan, so the way the heat sink works, so behind here there's a heat sink all spread out, so the other thing with the snap inverters, the cooling would come from the side and go out the top, because this spreads it all out the out the sides, rather than just a one, uh, one position. So. You mentioned that it's VPP or virtual power plant ready, uh, does that mean it works with the smart meter, the Fronia smart meter, as part of that? Yeah, so oh, you have the smart meter with it, but what you'll be doing is um, via APIs and cloud control and things like that, you'll be able to do uh, different settings, so charging and discharging the battery, um, be able to implement with different platforms, like the likes of DEX uh, are doing things like that, so um, all kind of getting ready for that. A lot of the utilities at the moment uh, are really closely looking at all that. Um, AEMO is really looking at it a lot to see what's happening, uh, you know, getting more control of inverters, um, so it's become, it's really, really picking up all that stuff. It's so future, busy, future so. grid ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, in terms of the, the, the monitoring of this thing, is no screen, right? Yeah. We've done away the screen. What's what's going on there? Uh, so the main thing was that um, because it's a hybrid inverter, um, there's just too much information to be able to put on a screen. So um, we still, uh, as I said, this is kind of completing the range. So the snap inverters will keep going. We'll still have that. So if someone does want the screen, but once you start getting to a hybrid, uh, there's just too many energy flows going around. So with this as well, you can have multiple smart meters on it. So you can have the main one and the main switchboard. That gives you the um, you know idea of what uh, all the energy flows around the house. But if you want to measure individual loads, you can put up to four meters on the uh, RS485 bus. And so once you start having that, and you know, okay, where's the energy going? You just can't put that on the display anymore. So that was the main, the main reason behind it. So. And does it, like the Snap Series, have a, a voltage-free contact so you can control some loads? Uh, yep, yep, it has all that. We've got multiple yep. ones, so okay. on the Snap inverters, uh, up until the latest update, we've had just one you can control, but now you can control up to four loads. Uh, digitally by that, and so just have the same, uh, same as well. And in hybrid mode, um, in a backup uh, arrangement, is there a break, disconnection? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a break. Uh, it's about five seconds. So you'll find um, any PV inverter will always have a break because you don't, um, there's a lot of requirements around LVRT, so low voltage ride through. Uh, so that's mainly uh, with PV inverters. So um, if you have a battery only inverter, they don't have those requirements. So that's why they can do an instant changeover. As soon as you have PV connected, you're subjected to these um, low voltage ride through requirements and hence you'll always have a break. Right, it's so, oh, well, yeah. good to know. Oh, thanks very much, Rod. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Ben. Bye.